right, what do we have here today? Today we have a secret spy message decoder in Excel. It's actually pretty cool because we're going to be using a couple of functions, some nested ifs, and uh, maybe one or two functions that they don't know about, but it's going to be awesome. Let's start off at the top and see what we have here. First, we have the instructions block. So when you click on the instructions block, it tells you what you're supposed to do. Okay, and this is the data validation part of it. All right, so data validation message, when the cell is selected, it comes up with instructions. That's pretty cool, and that actually covers one of the aspects of what they'll be doing in the metric cat. Anyway, moving on, we have the next two things, set one and set two of our cipher. I think it's called cipher. I'm not a spy, so I don't know. But if you take a look here, we have a named range. We've called this range set number one, and we've called this range, take a guess, set number two. So we have our data validation with named ranges already. Set one starts at 27, goes all the way down to one, and we have A to Z in a question mark. Set two carries on from 28 to 54, and we've got backwards Z to A and then a question mark. All right. So what the student needs to do now is they've got to decipher the message. Here is a message, and it consists of numbers and spaces. The spaces are the spaces between each word. This is just something I decided to do, okay? They've got to decide on how are they going to decipher this message based on the number. And this is the important thing. There's a couple of things to look up here. One is they've got a blank cell, so that's going to represent a space. It's going to be a nested if because there are going to be some conditions attached. And you can give them a hint if you want to. I, I don't know. I might not and just see if they figure it out and then maybe give them a hint that it's going to be HLOOKUP. HLOOKUP is what we're going to use. So let's start. Let's start. Equals it's going to be if because this is all conditional. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just cover the blank cell part. So if it is blank, if that cell is blank, there's nothing in it, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put a space. Okay. In fact, I'm going to work up here. It's easier to see. All right. We're going to do a space. Okay. That's our first condition covered. Let's go on to the next if statement. Now, if this is important, this cell over here, if this cell, right, C9, okay, is uh, less than or equal to 27. Less than or equal, that means we are covering set number one. That's what we're doing. We're covering set number one. If it is less than or equal to set number one, and what I'm going to do is that C4 that I've selected there, I'm going to make that an absolute cell reference. <coughs> Sorry, because we're going to be copying that through through the whole, the whole um, range anyway. Uh, if it is less than or equal to that, then what are we going to do? That is when our H lookup comes into play. Here it is there. H lookup. So let's start our H. What are we going to look up? Well, we're going to look up the number 20. What is our tip? Because I have a named range, I don't have to go and select all of this. I can actually just type it in there. Set number one. Perfect. Set number one. It's going to be in the second row because the first row contains the numbers. The second row is by row index number, and that's where the letters are contained. That's what I want. And because I want an exact match, I want to say false as my range lookup. Okay, are you guys with me so far? Man, I hope so. All right, so there's the first part. So if, basically, what we've determined here is if that number is inside of set one, then have a look with HLOOKUP, find the number, and tell me what the letter is. That's basically what it is. And the way that we determine if it is set 1, is if it's 27 or less. Obviously, the adverse is true. If it is not in set 1, it's obviously in set number 2. So we do another HLOOKUP. Here we go. We're looking up the same number. There it is there. So the range is set number 2. Perfect. The row, it's still in the second row because my number is my number in the first row. And it's an exact match. False. So, make false. There we go. Oh my word. Just make it false. There we go. Right. So, let's see. We got three closing there. Voila. Look at that. That is just absolutely beautiful. Now, to test and see if it works. Click. Drag this along. Absolutely awesome. Look at that. So you can see that all of my checks here have gone green. 
that's a good sign. It means that everything is correct. If something was incorrect, so I'm going to just change this to X, okay? It goes red. If there was nothing there and I haven't done anything, it should be... Oh, heck, I've done something funny there. Don't worry about that. Uh, go back. All right. Oh, hang on. It's blank. Sorry, there it is. Okay. Blank. Nothing there. X, red, wrong. Correct. Okay. Obviously, I've just typed it in so you can see what the conditional formatting does. These are all conditional formatting. And how did we do this? I will show you at the end of this how we did this. Okay. The last thing that they need to do is put this all together so it's just easier to look at, easier to read. Okay. And that's just using the basic concatenation. Although in the new versions of Excel, we've got concat. Concatenation is actually falling away. So what are we doing? Concat. And let's just concatenate all of this. There is the sentence. Perfect. Okay, so let's take a look at how we do the condition formatting. Okay, there's a couple of ways to do it, but I'll just show you. I'm going to unhide the rows here. As you can see, in this row, I have put the answer. I've just hidden the row. I've put the answer there. The letters are there that are meant to be there. And here, I've got a function. If the cell Okay, if that is blank, then I'm going to give this cell a value of zero. In fact, let me just show you where the values actually come in. Voila, do you see? If it is blank, what, sorry, if it's blank, it's one. If it's wrong, oh, I don't know what I was doing. What did I do? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Hold on. There we go. If it's blank, it's nothing. They haven't decoded it. If it's the wrong letter, it gets a value of one okay you see me there it is there it is and of course if it is correct it gets a value of two which then, and that's what the conditional formatting was based on if you take a look here i'll show you Manage rules there it is there if it is two it's correct awesome they get a green dot if it is one uh, it's wrong so they get, it's red and of course anything else if it's blank or empty whatever it's, a, it's just a gray, it means it hasn't been decoded yet. And that's what I did. And of course, just so that they don't get confused with all the numbers, I just made the font white. So, so it's white on white. There we go. Voila. And of course, hide, hide this. Okay, don't let them see that. That's it. I hope that uh, is something that you can use and you know have some fun with it. And um, if you can maybe make it better or use it with other sentences or questions, that would be fantastic. And let me know. Send me an email. Thank you.